Hello, I'm doing my January update. Um, the book I'm going to be talking about is um, this one. It's Robinson Crusoe by Daniel Defoe. Um, really quickly, just before I get into that, I just also wanted to um, mention that I'm trying to give up sugar at the moment. Um, so I've done a lot of videos about diet and things like that, and I've got some more on the way. Um, and um, after I read The Vegetarian Myth, I really, really got into this area and um, sort of tried to go sort of low carb, keto, but um, <clears throat> I've still, I still have sugary things, you know, I'm not, certainly not like really strict about it. Um, so if it was like a birthday or Christmas or holidays, you know, I just have what I want or if I just feel like it, you know, but I really try and keep it as low carb and, and low sugar as possible. Um, and then obviously we've just had Christmas and I had a lovely Christmas, had lovely food, lovely drink, things like that. Um, but after Christmas, I'm just so hungry when I have sugary things again. And I really got to thinking that I just want to want to really try and, and just get rid of it altogether because I'll do really well not having very much. But as soon as I have a day or two when I'm when I'm eating things again, whether it's you know bready carb things or sugary sweetie cake things, I'm just really so hungry afterwards and I'm sick of dealing with that kind of effect of it. Um, so I'm gonna try and go no sugar. I'm on day 15 now of having no sugar. Um, and that also includes processed foods um, because I think it is the high processing of, of sugar that, that causes a lot of the problems with it. Um, and I just thought I'd, I'd, I'd put it out there. Obviously it's that time of year when people are thinking about making changes. I don't know that it's the best time to really make changes when you're going through the withdrawal of not having the sugar or whatever it is. Um, and it's been it's been really hard. It has been really hard. I'm used to not having stuff every day um, as a normal day, but it's just like little treats, little things like, oh, we've had a nice day. It'd be nice to have something extra or had a really crap day or <laughs> something to cheer me up. Um, it has been very, very hard. And um, yeah, but so I'm gonna try and keep with it. Um, anyway, I thought I'd just put that in. And if anyone's got any good tips, you know, let me know. Um, or what their experience is. Right, so onto the book, Robinson Crusoe by Daniel Defoe. So I wanted to read this book, but I'm trying to just gradually read through a few old classic books, books that I've, you know, heard of all my life, but 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 wouldn't probably read off my own, you know, on my own. Um, I, to, to be honest, I don't read a lot of fiction. I tend to read a lot of non-fiction. I want to learn about things, um, but. You know, I do have interest in, and you know, I do enjoy fiction books as well. I just don't seem to get around to them. And um, I try and put, every time I have a bunch of books that I want to read, I try and put in some sort of a classic that, um, to just, you know, gradually read some of them. So that's why I wanted to read this. I was interested to learn in the beginning of this book that it's one of the earliest novels as we know them sort of um, fiction books written by somebody about something completely fictional, purely for entertainment. Um, so I suppose before you'd have a lot of, obviously things relating to religious stories and developments on that, myths, old stories, which have sort of underlining, underlying um, meanings and things, poetry and plays, which are also often based on myths or religious stories. Um, and apparently this is one of the very early entertainment novels. Um, so, it was written a really long time ago. I should have written down when it was written, shouldn't I? It was written in the very late 1600s, I think. Or it could have been very, very early 1700s, but I think it was late 1600s. Um, so obviously I was a bit concerned there might be a bit of a language barrier with it being that old. I've read Shakespeare and I usually like to have... Um, some kind of book helping me, some notes to help me with some of the language. Um, but actually I found this really easy to read and really enjoyable. It did have a little note section at the back for some of the terms um, and references, um, but I didn't feel it was really that needed. It was it was great, really enjoyed it. Um, it had a very sort of easy conversational style, um, which I really liked. Um, also, there's always, I find it in, in a lot of older books, you have a much um, better use of language than, uh, than um, some books today. Um, so that was really nice, I really like that. 
Um, so what's the book about? Uh, Robinson Crusoe gets stranded on an island. I think we all know that, don't we? Um, so he's stranded on this island. He has a few adventures before he gets there. Then he's on the island. And I think he ends up being there for like 20 years or something. So he has to completely create a life for himself in terms of um, getting food, shelter, and things like that. And he's pretty lucky because he gets loads of stuff off of the shipwreck to sort of set him up in terms of um, guns for getting food and the sails for creating shelter. Um, um, but there's still a lot that he has to do himself. And um, one of the biggest things he really suffers for on the island, because he sorts out his food supply and he sorts out his home, but you know, it's lonely. It's having that company. Um, he also has some Bibles and he ends up really going on quite a spiritual journey to, to reanalyze his past life and things because he wasn't religious before, but to sort of see where he's gone wrong and see where he's been selfish and maybe that he deserves this punishment. Um, and then like, he sees that maybe it's not a punishment because actually it's, it's helped him develop and grow in so many ways. Um, eventually he, he does find other people him, he finds that there are some people who, who occasionally use the island who are, mm, probably doesn't use the best PC terms. So the islands are in the Caribbean and it would have been the native people of those Caribbean islands. So they weren't living on his island but they sometimes came over there. So he started seeing them. He was really scared of cannibalism. So, and, and they were cannibals in the book. I don't know how accurate all that is, but um, it was certainly a big fear for him. Anyway, he eventually saves one of them from being eaten and then they sort of become friends and they manage to communicate and, and, um, and his friend um, learns sort of, you know, English and things like that. Um, so then he has a friend. Then, then he meets some other people who, are ship, who become shipwrecked and eventually he actually manages to, to get a ship and go back to Europe. Um, and he's, he's obviously a lot older by then. Um, anyway, so it was a good story. <clears throat> I did enjoy it. Um, <clears throat> it had quite a sort of lot of philosophical talk along the whole adventure talk. Um, some bits did get a little bit tedious at times when he'd be sort of, I don't know, spend like three pages talking about making a shelf. That could get a little bit tedious at, at times. Um, there was a lot of um, non-PC terms for people. Um, like when he's going around Africa and when he's then in the Caribbean. Probably not the terms we would use today, but um, uh, but I was, there was no kind of real judgment about it. It was just that they were different. And, and he felt that about any of the different people. It was the same with the Spanish. He was, he was very nervous of the Spanish people and <clears throat> who he says are known for their cruelty in the Americas and things. So lots of interesting sort of um, historical ways of looking at things. I always think it's because Sometimes when people are looking historically now, it's very much from the point of view where we are now. And sometimes when you read things that are actually written then, you think, actually, it's not really the case, is it? Or, or oh, they were aware of that and didn't think they'd know about that. So it's, that's interesting, looking from that sort of different perspective. Um, I really liked the language in it. It's, it's a lot much older style of language, but I actually really enjoyed that, enjoyed reading that. And... Um, I also really liked in the book, right at the end, there are some sort of true stories about people who were actually stranded around this time. And there was one in particular who Defoe knew, because he, I mean, this Daniel Defoe was like a really interesting person. He did all sorts of traveling around and um, doing interesting things. Um, but yeah, there was somebody who he had actually met who was stranded on an island and um, he used some of his experiences, you know, and then elaborated it and, um, and uh, made it a whole story. But it was really interesting to read the sort of reports from that time of this person, I think there was a couple of them that had been stranded on islands. That was really interesting. Um, so yeah, all in all, I really enjoyed the book. The book that I'm reading at the moment is um, this one. It's Nutrition and Physical Degeneration by Western Price and um, that's going really well. That's probably a really good book to read when you've just given up sugar and processed foods because it's got bad things to say about them. Um, so that's going really well. And after I've finished reading that, I'm getting near the end of that now, I'm gonna read this one, which is sort of a 
medieval Europe history book, um, which I'm really looking forward to. So there's definitely a hole in my um, in my knowledge. So I'm looking forward to that. Okay. So that's it. I'll be back next month. Have a good rest of January and into February. Hopefully it's going to warm up at some point. Okay. Thank you.